Good morning, everybody. Uneducated economist here, and happy birthday to my mom. It's my mom's birthday today, so go down into the comment section and wish mom a happy birthday. Thought I'd talk about what it is that we could expect from the Federal Reserve. Now, a lot of times, what it is that we think the Federal Reserve should be doing or doing wrong, or we hear other people saying these things, doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What it is that they are doing and how we best appropriately position ourselves is what's important. If you're 18 years old looking to start a retirement, or if you're 80 years old looking to hold on to your retirement, you're going to position and do different things with the economy that is much different from each other. So understanding it for yourself is far more important than understanding how they got it wrong or what it is that they need to be doing. What it is that they are doing is far more important to position ourselves with. Now, I'm going to read this top line here, and then we're going to kind of talk about this because it says commentators often argue that by delaying rate cuts for a meeting or two, we run the risk of having overtight policy that can cause a recession in the near term. And this is something that you hear quite a bit, like the Federal Reserve is doing undue harm to the economy and it's going to force us into a recession. I mean, is, have you heard something like this before? Right. So now when we think about like... When they when they keep the interest rates elevated, that's basically causing the pain to the economy. And if the, if the economy is slowing down, then that's what's really causing the recession. I mean, it almost intuitively makes sense in that fashion. He says, while I find this narrative to be interesting, I also find it to be somewhat puzzling. The reason is as follows. So he's going to give reasons why he doesn't believe this, right? While keeping interest rates elevated causes the recession. This is what he has to say. When rates are going up, most of the discussion is on long and variable lags of monetary policy with rate hikes not having a serious impact on the economy for 18 months or more. Now think about that. From the time they start to raise interest rates, it has 18 months before it finally starts to work its way into the economy in a serious fashion. Right. Let me read it again. When rates are going up, most of the discussion is on the long and variable lags of monetary policy with rate hikes not having a serious impact on the economy for 18 months or more. But when it comes to the delaying of rate, rate cuts for a short period of time, we supposedly risk suddenly driving the economy into a recession. So what he is saying is just like, so it takes 18 months to get into full impact on the economy, but if we don't drop them, that's going to immediately impact? Now, I do believe it has an immediate impact on the markets, but it doesn't have an immediate impact on the economy for at least some time, right? There's the lag time. But when it comes to the delaying of rate cuts for a short period of time, we supposedly risk suddenly driving the economy into a recession. This supposed asymmetry in the lag effects of rate hikes versus rate cuts is puzzling and not supported by any economic model I am aware of. So what he was saying it was like, so it's the same lag effect that takes place, whether you're cutting or cutting or, or raising. It doesn't uh, all of a sudden have an impact on the economy in a significant way the moment that you cut rates. It takes 18 months or more to have the full impact. And the, and the way to kind of think about this is, is that if you can imagine all the economy operating off of a higher interest rate right now, and all of a sudden tomorrow the interest rates come down, that might have an immediate impact on the markets as they are going to start adjusting themselves as this lower interest rates into the future starts to impact their investments. But all the rest of the economy is still operating on those higher interest rates. They don't get to refinance their loans the next day. And not would they even do it if it just dropped a little bit. It would have to start dropping significantly into the future before they would ever really have any kind of reason to actually refinance those loans. So the whole economy is still operating on higher interest rates for a significant amount of time going into the future. This is what's causing this lag period. But yet when people are out there speaking about the Federal Reserve, been talking on their videos and the news articles and everything else, it has this idea that the moment that they drop interest rates is going to have this immediate full impact on the economy, but it doesn't do it like that. And this is what you know he finds puzzling about the whole thing because there's no economic model that supports that theory, that narrative. All right. So how do we square the circle on this narrative? I think the explanation is that, as I noted earlier, Rate cuts tend to occur after major economic shocks that cause or threaten to cause a recession. War, 
pandemic, great financial crisis. Historically, large and rapid rate cuts are highly correlated with recessions, and this leads to the inference that policy was too tight. All right? People will say, hey, man, you had your policy too tight. That's what's caused the recession. But he was like, well, they correlated with all these other issues. Let me read this again, right? How do I think this is very important because they talk in a very confusing way. So like kind of going over and over and it really makes sense, right? How do we square the circle on this narrative? I think the explanation is that, as I noted earlier, rate cuts tend to occur after major economic shocks that cause or threaten to cause a recession. Historically, large and rapid rate cuts are highly correlated with the recession, and this leads to the inference that policy was too tight and actually caused the recession. But it is very difficult to untangle the effects of tight monetary policy, right? Because all the all the contracts, everybody who signed all these loans and everything are still dealing with the higher interest rates. It, it is difficult to untangle all that. Right to bring it into the lower interest rates, right or however it's just it's it, this is not something that happens the very next day is what I guess I'm getting at right. It takes time to start working in. It is very difficult to untangle the effects of monetary policy from a major economic shock when looking at past U.S. recessions. So let me read that again because. It is very difficult to untangle the effects of tight monetary policy from a major economic shock when looking at past recessions. So every time they tried to lower it, it was very difficult to finally unwind all this stuff that was going on in the, in the economy. We do not have this the counterfactual of what impact delayed rate cuts would have had on the economy in the absence of the economic shock. So... They wouldn't know, like every time it seems to be an economic shock, so we don't know what the delay would actually do, right? Let me read it again. We do not have the counterfactual of what impact delayed rate cuts would have had on the economy in the absence of an economic shock. My conjuncture is that in the absence of a major economic shock, delaying rate cuts by a few months should not have substantial impact on the real economy in the near term. Right? Because interest rate adjustments doesn't really have an impact on the economy for a long term. Right? So if they delay it, it doesn't really have an impact on the short term. It doesn't really matter. And that's what he is trying to say there by lowering interest rates. And people are saying if they don't lower interest rates, it's going to cause a recession. He is saying, no, usually this is due to we lower interest rates due to economic shocks, which are causing the recession. But everybody's going to correlate it with the higher interest rates. And even if we were to lower interest rates right now, it really wouldn't have an impact on the economy for 18 months. And even if they were to go into a plan, this is something. Well, here, let me finish this before I go off. <laughs> my my conjuncture is that in the absence of major economic shocks, delaying rate cuts by a few months should not have a substantial impact on the real economy in the near term. And I think I have shown that acting too soon could squander our progress on inflation and risk considerable harm to the economy because that is their ammunition. Lowering interest rates is the ammunition. If they give it up now, then they would not have as much ammunition to deal with a real downturn coming into the economy. Typically, the Federal Reserve would want to lower interest rates around 5% to stimulate the economy. They are at 5% now. If they give up any of it, they would literally be giving up the ability to stimulate the economy into the future. So they're going to hold on to it as long as they possibly can in the absence of a of a economic shock. All right. Does that kind of make sense? Like why why in the world would they give that up when that's what they need in order to stimulate the economy? And any time they have ever lowered interest rates into the future, it was generally because there was a recession caused by some other economic shock that was taking place. And that was the reason why they lowered interest rates. However, it tends to be blamed on the fact that they had interest rates elevated at the time. Does all that kind of make sense? I don't know if I got that right. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I got that right. I don't know if I said it right, but I know I got it right. <laughs> anyway, you guys can go and read it for yourself and get it right. But anyhow, this is a very interesting couple of paragraphs that I found within the speech. And I thought, you know, it would be cool, pretty good to read this entire speech, break it in down for the members only live stream that we should do maybe tomorrow morning. Or no, wait a minute. That's, I don't want to go over Lumberjack Landlord's time. So um, how about we do it late night? 
Would late night be too much? Let's do late night Sunday after bingo. And we'll do the members only live stream breaking this entire uh, speech down so we understand the uh, the entire message that Christopher Waller was trying to give inside of this. But to me, this is a very telling speech. Like, this is exactly what it is that they are thinking. You know, you go back and you, I mean, you even think about it like this. This is something I wanted to kind of add as far as my own, my own takeaway from this. If the Federal Reserve has a la- if there is a lag time within the interest rates and the full impact that that the lowering interest rates or even raising interest rates would have if they were to lower interest rates right now say over the next 18 months from right now right so that way the full impacts of the first adjustments of interest rates would be hitting the economy at the very end of when they are lowering interest rates so they have like an 18 month span in which that they're dropping interest rates right And so when they get to the end of the 18 months, that's when they stop lowering interest rates. And that's when the full impact of the very first dropping of interest rates is going to have on the economy, right? As we continue on into the future, the rest of the interest rate drops would then have continual impacts on the economy. So you really, you think about it, it's going to be 18 months after the final dropping of interest rates that is going to have its full impact on the economy. That is going to be three years after the moment that they stop dropping interest rates to the moment that the very full impact of the final dropping of interest rates over the course of 18 months would take. Does that kind of make sense? You see like how long of a time frame this would be? Did you guys kind of get that? Did, should I explain it one more time just so I can kind of get it there? If the Federal Reserve says, hey, we have interest rates at 5% right now, and over the course of the next 18 months, we are going to go on the systematic program where we are going to slowly drop interest rates, maybe by a quarter point, maybe less than that, who knows, maybe even more. But generally, we're just going to keep dropping it fairly systematically all the way for the next 18 months. Once they hit that final dropping of interest rates, it will be 18 months after that that would finally have the impact, the full impact onto the economy. So you think about it from the moment that they started lowering interest rates, they made this decision over the course of 18 months, we're going to lower interest rates. The moment that they started that program to the very end of it, to it has its full impact on the economy would be three years. That's like how long of a time frame we're working with here. Because lowering interest rates a quarter point isn't going to do anything to the economy. What's going to do something to the economy is that full dropping of interest rates, like that's 3 4%, 5%. And it's going to take a while to get there. And if it takes a while to get there, then it's going to take a while for it to have its full impact on the economy. And so as people are getting excited about buying a house and refinancing it next year or something like that, you may be in for a long ride as these guys are anticipating how long that lag is going to be. And really what he is saying is that whether we drop it right now or in two months from now or whenever, it really isn't going to have a near-term impact. It's an 18 months down the road impact, if you think about it. All right. Wish my mom happy birthday. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.